Thank you very much. Thank you. Nice to be here on television. I always like to be on TV. It's probably the most powerful medium that's ever been invented. You know, that's why it's so difficult for people to watch their weight. It's because of television. You know, you try and watch your weight, you try and watch what you eat, but every time you turn television on, they're always pushing food on you. Especially late at night, you turn it on, you see commercials about pies, and about cakes, and some guy eating pizza and cheese hanging out of his mouth. This little doughboy selling these hot little rolls. It drives you crazy. And it's all regenerative food. You know what I mean when I say that? I give a good example, a donut. That's a perfect example of a regenerative food. Because see, a donut, you eat a donut, you chew it up, you break it down into its component parts, you swallow it, and then it reforms into its original <laughs> shape. Right around there. So now you have this permanent little Winchell stand right there. It's never going to go away. So you got to remember that. You got to remember if big buns go in, big buns are going to come out. <laughs> Of course, it doesn't work with all foods, otherwise you'd hear a lot of men ordering, Waiter, large sausage over here, please. <laughs> and, uh, and two big melons for my wife, please. Uh, <laughs> now, see, it seems like when it comes to food, your body always likes to play tricks on you. I, I've, I've found that. I sometimes think your body likes to play tricks on you just anyway. Do you ever have your saliva glands overflow when you're trying to impress somebody? You know, you're, you're talking, yes, I think I can pay back the loan. I'm in complete control of... Oh, I'm sorry. I don't know what happened there. <laughs> Same with food. I've had this happen when I'm having dinner with a woman that I'm trying to impress. You know, everything's going real well and our personalities are hitting it off and we're talking. And while I'm talking to her, I'm eating and talking. While I'm talking to her, all of a sudden my body decides to throw out a little piece of food. <laughs> Nothing big, you know, just a little bitty thing. And it throws it out. It doesn't throw it out so it clears my lip and drops in my lap. I mean, it throws it out. <laughs> so that it flies through the air, picking up all the light as it goes. You know? almost, almost glows, you know, and of course it's right on her plate, you know. And, and nobody knows what to say is an awkward moment when she looks and I look and, and you know, oh, I'm, I'm sorry, I, I'll pick it out here. Anyway. <laughs> it's even worse when she doesn't see it because then you got this dilemma. Sh should, I, should I pick it off her plate? <laughs> or should I let her eat it? <laughs> ah, to hell with her, let her eat it. <laughs> Not gonna hurt her. I used to think that it would. I used to be a big germ freak. I probably was worse when it came to... I, was, I didn't like to ride public transportation because I was afraid of touching things. I might get germs, you get sick. It's so stupid, you know? Because I've really come to the conclusion that illness is more from your mental attitude. And I'll tell you what made me think that. Doctors. I got to thinking about doctors. I thought, now wait a second here. Doctors are around all kinds of contagious diseases. All the time. And yet they hardly ever get them. Because if they did, you can bet they wouldn't treat anybody, you know. <laughs> Some guy come in, Doc, I think I got bubonic plague. Geez, get the hell away from me! Get the hell out of here! Whatever he touched, burn! <laughs> and nurse, don't send them sick people in here. What are you trying to do, kill me? <laughs> So there's got to be some sort of mental attitude that they set up because they're only human. I mean, they're not immortal. Although, uh, see, I always thought that. I had a tendency to put doctors up on a pedestal. I don't know how many people are like that. They almost became godlike to me. They could say anything to me. I'd go along with it, you know. Uh, Mr. Monteith, they're going to have to paint your butt red. Oh. <laughs> okay, go ahead. You are the doctor. They have this enormous power over us, you see? And they exercise it. They know it. They reinforce it, you know? They're, it's almost like a religion with doctors. They're almost gods, you know? You go to see them. They never come see you. You gotta go see them, you see? And you never see them right away. They always make you sit out in this little germinal purgatory out there with these other suffering souls and wait. You gotta sit there and wait and wait and wait and wait and wait and wait. That's why you're called a patient. You wait and wait. <laughs> And then the nurse comes out and he grants you an audience. The doctor will see you now. And you go into this little confessional and you tell him what's wrong. And he looks you over and he makes his judgment and he writes out his cure. And then he sees, sends you to see his disciple, the druggist. <laughs> who also has some characteristics of religion. Did you ever notice the druggist work area is always elevated? 
Just about a foot and a half, just enough so it puts him above everybody else. <laughs> so you walk in a drugstore, you see the druggist at the altar in the back there. You have to walk down this long aisle and approach him for absolution. And when you get there, you're forced to look up. Now, that's a very supplicating position to look up like that. You know, please! Please, heal me! Please, I have a note from God! Must be from God, nobody else can read it! Of course, the druggist looks down upon you because he knows he has this immense power over you because behind him are thousands of wonder drugs. Which you call it because the doctor said, hmm, I wonder if this will work. <laughs> now, I'm not trying to shake faith in doctors because I have great faith in them. In fact, I think faith helps in the cure. Uh, in fact, they've proven that. You know, doctors have given people with medicine that, that had nothing in it and they still got better, you see. Because you figure the old days, they didn't have great medicines and people went to see doctors and they got well. In fact, a couple of hundred years ago, they used to bleed people with leeches. <laughs> Seemed to work okay. I got to admit, if a doctor brought a leech out, that would cure me of anything. <laughs> uh, let me stick this leech. Oh, God, Doc, my heart attack cleared right up. My emphysema was gone, boy. Ain't no way I'd report VD. No way. Thank you very much.